The town of Schwäbisch Hall is old, although nobody's completely sure how old. There was a settlement here from the 5th to the 1st century BC, and there was a settlement here in the Middle Ages, but no evidence of anything between those dates. The meaning of the name Hall is the subject of some argument. The modern theory is that it might refer to a hillside or a mining industry, but traditionally it has always been assumed that it's related to the Celtic word for salt, and indeed most, but not all, German cities with Hall in their names are connected with salt. And that's the case here. This is the site of a borehole for the extraction of salt, a valuable commodity and the basis of the town's wealth in the Middle Ages. Carts laden with it passed through here and forded the river on their way out of the city. The oldest parts of this tower date from the 13th century and it also served as a prison. The word Schwäbisch was added to the name to distinguish this place from other cities called Hall. You might think this means it was in the historic Duchy of Swabia, but in fact it was in Franconia. In the turbulent period of the 14th century, the city allied itself with the Swabian League of Cities, eventually declaring itself to be in fact Swabian. Another source of the city's wealth was the minting of coins, an industry set up in the 12th century by the legendary King Barbarossa. The coin that was minted here was called the Hella. It had a cross on one side and the right hand of God on the other, as depicted in the city's coat of arms. This is a post-war reconstruction of the Executioner's Bridge, originally built in 1502. It was so called because the city executioner levied a toll for the transport of wood. Schwäbischhall's importance grew throughout the Middle Ages and, unlike other territories in the region, was able to hold its own during the Peasants' Revolt of 1525 and, over a century later, recovered well from the Thirty Years' War. Fire, though, was always a more formidable enemy and the fire of 1728 destroyed two-thirds of the city. Most of the buildings on the marketplace were built in the Baroque style of that period, including the City Hall. <music> on market days, this fountain was used to keep the fish that was being sold. Above it, the pillory used to punish people convicted of certain crimes by exposing them to public ridicule. One of the survivors of the fire was the Church of St Michael. It was first consecrated in 1156, but most of what can now be seen was built in the 15th and 16th centuries. Inside are works of art spanning 500 years. The Lutheran preacher Johannes Brentz is credited with ensuring that these priceless artefacts did not fall victim to the iconoclastic fury of the Reformation.
In 1802, Schwäbisch Hall was annexed by Württemberg, effectively cutting tradesmen and farmers off from their traditional markets in Franconia. Although it remained important as an administrative seat, it never really regained its former glory, and even the Industrial Revolution mostly passed the city by. But although the Nazi era did leave its mark on Schwäbisch Hall, it was almost untouched by the bombs of the Second World War, which helped tourism, now one of the city's two main industries. The other is finance, and its biggest employer is the Schwäbisch Hall Building Society. Not far away, towering above the village of Steinbach, is the Comburg Monastery. It was originally built in the 11th century, but very little of that period remains. Over the course of the 15th and 16th centuries, most of it was replaced by a massive Baroque complex surrounded by walls, more like a fortress than a monastery. Although we usually think of monks taking a vow of poverty, these ones were nobles, and they liked their creature comforts. The monastery was mediatized in 1802, meaning that the monks had to leave. But it is home to jackdaws, the smallest of the corvids, a species of bird that often likes to nest in church towers. Traditionally, jackdaws are seen as vain, thieving creatures, forever plotting and conspiring. A cynic might say that perhaps very little changed in 1802. I sometimes wonder what would have happened in Star Wars if, when Darth Vader gave the order to destroy Alderaan, all the computer screens on the Death Star went blank except for a message that said, An unexpected error has occurred. Yeah.